When installing ELMS, you'll have many options. This video is to help you go through what they mean. First of all, you should see free status messages. You may get a warning about Mac's allowed packet settings. Click the button to try and override those settings, otherwise you'll have to tweak your database. You'll see the tutorial video you're watching now, and then you'll see installation options. By default, these ones are selected for you. Core focus has to do with how you plan on using ELMS. Most development work has been done towards making ELMS an instructionally focused content management system. You can, however, just utilize the architecture, which is great for managing sites and grouping those sites together. Collaborative learning environment is a second install routine for ELMS, which will not be covered in this video. It allows for student-centric collaboration in terms of uh, submission of images, videos on external services, and blog posts that can be aggregated into the system. I recommend trying it out in a later time. For now, we're going to walk through these features. So anything marked as dev has been included in the package but needs substantial development. The only thing marked alpha is Elm's reaction, which has only seen minor development changes but everything that's been marked as a full stable release as part of Elm's beta can be seen here. The next step is to configure your accessibility. By default, we have WCAG 2.0 AA, as that's the Penn State standard at this time. Developer settings, these just involve installing additional modules that you can turn on at a later point in time. It's recommended that you have developer tools and developer site building user interface on at this time, though they're not required. Performance enhancements has to do with CSS delivery and user progress analytics pack, while only partially implemented, will allow you to start getting rich data about your users and build additional tools that plug into that. Site information, you can change the name of your site to whatever you want, and then you have to set up the administrator account as well as what the default time zone is. Keep in mind that any of these settings are not locked in stone. You can change these during the install, and actually, if you're familiar enough with Drupal, you can turn them on after the fact. Once you've made your selection, scroll to the bottom page and click Save and Continue. 